Irish companies are no different than any other company around the world. I think cloud computing has created some confusion in the marketplace. It's a buzzword. Uh, and I liken it to 10 years ago when, when the internet boom, or 12 years ago when the internet boom was in its, its pomp, and people talked about eyeballs on the screen. Um, cloud computing is like that today. People, it is a buzzword. It gets people's interest. But cloud computing in its kind of pure form has been around for maybe 15, 16, 17 years. I mean, for those of us old enough, we remember web-based email. That's been around since the mid-90s. That was cloud computing. That was maybe the, I'm not sure it was the first, but one of the early cloud computing applications. Cloud computing, um, I think, in essence, allows companies or individuals to be able to get access to computing power much cheaper before. I mean, at, at one level, cl cloud computing is extreme virtualization on a pay-for-use pay basis. That's great. You go back to the time maybe when even we were my age group or before, nobody knew, you couldn't afford a computer. I mean, none of us can, I mean, there's many of us that can't remember the, being able to afford a PC. Now you can afford to, Anybody, a 12-year-old, probably afford to have a share of a server and computing power that would send a rocket to the moon 40 years ago. That is the essence of cloud computing. Um, people who are selling applications and services, those services existed before. The delivery method may have changed. It may allow them to be accessible to others. So I would say that there is a confusion, but it's a buzz, and it'll change. And it'll settle down like everything else settles down. At the end of it, though, it's going to provide a benefit to everybody. It is progression. And I said it allows everybody to have access and the ability um, to get computing power. And for Ireland, I would hope that that ability allows us to be able to innovate more, that the kids at school get the, uh, the opportunity to do that. Uh, there are initiatives around the country, um, Coder Dojo, for example, down, that started down in Cork. Kids can do what they want now. They have access. If they want to do it, they can get the computing power to do whatever they want if they have the, the, the desire and the imagination to do that. So at a consumer level or basic level, cloud computing allows that. For a company, it allows them to have cheaper computing power at a cost that they're able to manage without having to worry about providing huge infrastructure and back office infrastructure to support that. The general concerns, so whether you're a consumer or a business. I think you mentioned about the consumer charging ahead. I think they are, and they're on a particular trajectory. But so are companies. The difference is they're on a different trajectory. The company has to figure out how to create the environment for the consumer to, to be able to do what he wants to do. But the consumer is going to drive that agenda more and more. Um, cloud computing makes everything affordable. But for the consumer, what does cloud computing still mean? And, and I don't think people kind of know that yet. So what does that mean for them? Is it, is it just access to apps? Is it, just, is it access to my bank account? On one sense, uh, cloud computing is depersonalizing um, our, our commercial world more and more. We, there was a time when you could, you'd still have to talk to somebody, but now you have an app to do your bank, your bank account. Now you, have, you had online banking. You still have a phone number, but you'd have an app that you're 24 seven. If you go to the airport, you no longer have to talk to anybody. You can flash your phone with your boarding pass and you go through. So we've depersonalized and taken the people out of it. The commercial world needs to provide that infrastructure to continue to do that. And there is some confusion there about how far can you go. Private individuals, and I would say that this is generational as well, below a particular age group, they, they don't care. They don't care about who sees their data as such. They share everything. I mean, it's, everybody wants to have a thousand friends on Facebook. They don't care. There's no privacy in that sense. How does a commercial organization still create that, maybe that privacy for them? So the balance between the consumer and the commercial side is that we need to make sure that one, you know, if your data is in the cloud somewhere, does the individual know that it's encrypted? How is the storage been taken care of? And then for the, the companies, they have to get a balance in that. You know, if you're a large company, you probably want to have a private cloud. There, you know, public cloud isn't for everybody. Private cloud, probably for the larger companies. Small business has less to lose, has less data. They can kind of be more like the, the commercial guys. Getting that balance right, I think, is very important. And there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, from a security point of view, there is no perfect security. Anybody who says so is, uh, giving you a load of flannel. Um, but getting that balance right and analyzing your risk is very important. There is a trade-off between public and private cloud. Um, but so the important thing is that regardless 
of what you call, whether it's cloud today or it was networking computing, I don't know how many years ago, 10 years ago, you still need to protect your information. And I, I know within Trend we kind of say that we're trying to create a world that's safe for the exchange of digital information. And whether you like our vision statement or not, but what we recognize is that you have to be almost platform independent. So to, what's the next cloud going to be in five or 10 years time? So how do we make sure we protect you, the consumer or the, or the commercial organization? That's important. So your data is important. How do you encrypt it? How do you make sure the storage is, is, is secured? Who has access? How is that access allowed? What risk profile do you want to have? Uh, what are you afraid of? And what don't you care about? And taking all those questions into consideration, then decide what type of protection you need. The cloud is just the platform. It's not, you know, one time we started off, we had gates to our house and we didn't lock our doors. Now we lock our doors and we have alarms because people get more and more sophisticated and, and how they threaten you. The same thing is happening in, in the computing world. So you can get caught up in the hype and think, this is it, we're at the end of the game. There'll be something else in five years' time. But if you know that your data is safe wherever it's kept, that it's safe as it's traveling through the cloud, that the recipient gets it in a safe way, that's the important part. Ireland is in a good position, although I think that all the things that Ireland has done to get us to that place um, are now being copied. I mean, it, I even know from talking to our own executive team around the world that they, they would be envious of the way, the attitude that we have in Ireland, the infrastructures that the government have put in place, whether that would be Enterprise Ireland, the IDA, people like that. I, it is the envy, but it is, you can copy it. And I think that we're at a point now where we need to look for some sort of inflection to change because the others are going to catch up and we can't rely on what got us to where we are today. I mean, in Ireland, in IT, there is arguably um, a shortage of talent. Uh, we're not churning out the people out of the colleges as quickly as we need them. We're not attracting people from abroad. Now, I don't think there's any crisis or anything like that at the moment. I mean, Ireland is still probably one of the best places to locate in the world. But I think now is the time to step back and say, okay, what's going to change? Because if you're in, I don't know, Hungary, they can copy what we did here. And that's the fear. Um, but today we're in a good place. I would say the government should still keep investing in the infrastructure. Both the pipe in and the pipe out of this place, you know, we're on the periphery. It's not good enough to say that it's as good as the UK or it's good as something else. We need to be better if you want to make Ireland that cloud centre.